Hello and welcome back to MHub Inside. Uh, today's episode, we're going to kind of revamp into an old project that we've upgraded a couple of things. Uh, someone in the comments of the previous video for these little restrictors suggested, why aren't we using a uh, parts catcher? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that, as well as an upgrade that I made to our part puller from the last video. So if you, first thing we'll show is the part puller. Uh, what it used to be previously mounted on was this guy right here, uh, which was originally built to be mounted down on the gang plate. Um, I figured out how to mount it up here, but it was very, very precariously held and had a possibility of crashing if everything wasn't done right. So what I actually did is I ended up making this mount system right here, which Tormach actually sells uh, this whole kit now as a turret mount, but they don't sell just this little part. If anybody's interested, I'd be happy to release those files. So far, everything seems to be uh, fitting correctly. So um, if that's something you'd like, please let us know down in the comments. Uh, now to what a parts catcher is. Um, a parts catcher is a device, a cup system, a holding area for your parts as they come off. They're especially useful for little bitty guys like this. Um, so as you're turning your stock and it gets cut off, it's usually just gonna fall down on the bottom here and then we have to dig around in chips, get little cuts like I do all the time, which is a huge bummer. Um, so this is something that's either going to come up and be in position for when it falls off, is attached to something else and comes over, always lives there, whatever. Big fancy machines will often have those built in, so they're a little bit universal. Obviously this is a prototype, small production run level, so nobody, I, my Googling, I didn't find anything that anybody's using. Um, and we had three ideas, and I'm going to show you the process that I went through for what I hope to be our final rendition of a pretty universal design. Um, the first idea was to do some kind of funnel system that either bolted on here. We can get super fancy with some mechanical stuff. We do have the I.O. Um, board, which we might end up using in a next iteration with some pneumatics, but for now, I hope this works. Um, so that would be something that came out and over, but that's a whole extra level of programming. So I just wanted something that was a little dirty and quick. Um, so we could have either done the funnel that lined up, but that was going to be a lot in the way. Most likely something was going to crash. Um, the idea, the second idea, or the, the second idea that I thought of was to mount something permanently. So move my cutoff tool down here and have something else. But realizing that one, um, I didn't have enough clearance. This uh, gang plank mount doesn't come close enough to where I was planning on cutting off. So this location with the tooling I have didn't work as an option. And so what I, uh, my second idea was to actually mount something through the gang plate holder, but I figured out that that would end up crashing with another, another tool, so that wouldn't work either. It might work depending on somebody's particular setup, um, but you can see real dirty, real quick, it's just some PVC tubes, some PVC cement, a couple of holes drilled, and it actually if it was a different tool setup, this would have worked great. It would have just chopped off right in there, things would have dropped right out, there's little holes that I drilled in the bottom for coolant, um, this took me probably 20 or 30 minutes just with measuring and making sure all the hole patterns were right. Um, and that would have been perfect if this job had allowed for that to happen. You can see some of the supplies, you know, I was just testing little cuts. So it doesn't have to be expensive prototyping, fail cheap, fail quick, uh, or fail quick, fail cheap. Um, so all I was using was PVC um, tube, PVC cement, and PVC board, and then it's going to move on to some 3D printing. So I'm going to show you the design for that in a second. Um, the design that we settled on, I prototyped using some large um, PVC that is simply just strapped directly to the bolts uh, using some wire that you'd find in your produce section for closing off twist tie bags. Um, and a large piece of PVC that I was using just to get an eyeball measurement of everything. So it is actually living around my cutoff tool, tool number eight in my particular instance. Um, and what should end up happening is there is just enough clearance that this is gonna come in at the right level. There's enough clearance between where I'm cutting off, the tools in there, and so it's all self-contained. And I figured out the sizing I needed from here. So this was a rough version. So what I did is I took those measurements and some models that I had in Fusion and opened them up so that I could get an accurate design of exactly what I wanted. So now this is actually going to bolt directly to that mounting face for the tools. Um, there's a rear window which will slide in and out that I'm going to laser cut. Is this guy right here. Uh, that will allow me to remove parts as this hopper gets filled. 
And in the front, uh, there's a front window that has a slot. And I can make a series of these that um, will allow for different diameters of stock because the motion is only in line with the, the part. There's no um, y-axis movement, meaning that I only need to make sure that my tool goes in line, in and in and out, and I'm golden. I shouldn't crash into anything. So using this, I'm printing out all this stuff on the Stratasys, and uh, you're about to see some footage of that coming up soon. And um, this should bolt right on and be fairly universal. I'll be able to make a bunch of different windows for different size stocks. My parts will hold in this little cavity. Uh, there's a little cutout window for the tool, so it's all self-contained um, and should be great. Uh, here's some footage of it working. All right, so it's the next day. We've got everything printed. Um, I've test mounted it. I made a couple of test little windows, made sure all of my mounting holes were appropriate. If you wanna come in and check it out, it's a pretty cool design. Uh, so as I mentioned, the front has a window where we can just swap sizes depending on whatever the stock is that we're holding. You can see the cutoff tool and the coolant is in there. This back window opens to allow me to grab parts. I will admit that I've run this once off camera to make sure everything worked great. Um, so far, seems to be dreamy. Uh, there are, will be a little bit of chip in there, but it's very easy to differentiate, differentiate between the chip that is in here and the chip that is um, there, and the parts that are in there. A couple of other things I've added, some holes, speed holes we'll call them, but it's coolant drainage um, and adjusted the size of this because I realized after printing that it won't clear if it's in the wrong spot. So V2 of this um, um, is a little bit shorter and a little bit further back. Uh, which will allow tool changes to occur over the ways. Uh, once this design is fully fleshed out, we'll definitely uh, provide a link in the, in the bottom uh, to download this for yourself if you'd like. So uh, why don't we check it out and see how it works. So we we'll close this door right here. Cool. And close this guy. And hit go. All right, and here comes the fun part.
So now our part is contained, it didn't fall through. And we're gonna do a tool change with my, or to uh, the part puller with my adjusted bracket. All right, and if we want to take a look, you can see all I got to do is open this. If you look in there, there should be a part sitting. So you can see there are a few chips in there, but it is definitely much easier to find my part uh, right there. Bam. So now I don't have to go dig through the bottom. Uh, another nice little tool for the MHub users. Uh, that's it for this video. Hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for joining us.